What's up everybody, Aaron here. And first I wanna thank all of you who have subscribed to the channel, it means a lot. I'm gonna keep putting out content like this, so thank you, thank you, thank you. Today I'm going to be reviewing a piece of DJ gear that for some reason seems to be controversial in our community. It's a f***ing light. <laughs> All right, so today I'm going to be reviewing, yes, the Gig Bar Move from Chavez. And uh, I I'll give you my opinions after we're done with the review. The first part of it, I'll just show you what it's like. So if you're out there and you're looking for something, I'll give you an idea of what this thing can do. So first I should mention that when I first started, I worked for a DJ company that had two poles, a pole over the middle, a mirror ball, derbies, pin spots, jellies i mean there were six lights on top the power bank was on top everything was powered on the, it took me 45 minutes to an hour just to get the lighting set up so i knew when i was doing this myself i didn't want to go down that route so i ended up picking up the dots t par wash lights which i love they're great i'll do a review on those in another video but i was at one wedding and i kind of was mixing and i looked up to see how things were going and i was just seeing just you know the color splashes and it looked cool but i was like uh, that's a little boring. I want something else. I want something a little bit more fun. So I picked up the Gig Bar 2. And one of the things I loved about it was the setup. It takes a minute. So when the Gig Bar Move came out, I thought, let me check this out because it seems like an upgrade to the Gig Bar 2 and it adds the movers. All right, so why don't we walk through the outside hardware so you can see exactly what the Gig Bar Move looks like and then I'll turn it on and we'll we'll go from there. Right away, here's the new stuff on the Gig Bar Move. We got the movers right here. And that is kind of what will contribute to the noise. When I turn it on, you'll hear that it's a lot louder than any other Gig Bar that I've heard so far. Right in the middle, you've got two wash lights. On the top, this is the derbies, one and two. The dots, the dots, the dots. Dotson, Dotson, we've got Dotson here. Nobody cares. Yeah. Up at the top here, right in the middle, that's the laser, and that gives you like a green, red kind of splatter all over the ceiling. By the way, don't aim these at people's eyes. It can go all the way to the bottom. You can aim it all the way to the top, nice and easy. Boop. You got four lights in the middle of the Geek Bar Move, and these are your strobe lights. They also do UV, which is pretty cool. And so do the uh, washes. The washes also do UV lights. Let's talk about the movers. What they basically do, they'll just give you some patterns around. Like um, when you do DMX, you'll be able to see them more. But for the most part, it does like a flower. It will do just all sorts of different shapes. And they just move around. They move around like they're supposed to. They're not super bright. It doesn't like fill up the whole room. It adds another dimension to your lights, which is one of the things I thought, hey, that's great. They added movers to a gig bar. All right, here's the back. And then I'm going to go over the settings a little bit more later but just so you can see what the back looks like you've got your power in your power out so if you wanted to connect here's the deal you can take the derbies off or something else off and just plug it in you can it'll give you power access right there you got your dmx out dmx in your ir remote this is for your remote control and the mic is for the sensitivity that's what listens to the music so it knows what to do in sound mode and then over here, you got a nice color display that I'll show you in just a little bit. Hey, let's talk cable management real quick. On the back of my pole here, I've got gravity clips. And these are great because you really can put your power cord right behind there. I've got three going down the pole, and I've got another couple that are on the base of the pole. And that just keeps your power cable looking nice and clean. So this is the back. You can see that you can't even really see it there because it's so clean. Okay, so menu, you can see also we got a nice color LED screen there. Um, if we hit menu and we go, we can go up and down through auto, sound, here's your DMX slave, and setup. If we hit enter and we go to setup, then this tells us if we want to have the remote on, the foot switch on, pan reverse off, tilt reverse off, and then you can reset as well. If you want to know what all that stuff does, just look it up. I'm not going to do that shit. Hey, how about we turn this thing on and see how it looks? It comes with two ways to... Hi! Holy sh**. Okay, so you get two ways to control it. You get the remote, and there is a foot switch here that also um, controls it. So, with the remote, we've got the IR is right here. 
And the range is pretty good. You just kind of got to hold it up behind there and I can turn it off, throw it on blackout mode right there. Boom, fires it back on. The foot switch, by the way, I wouldn't use this as a foot switch. It's all plastic and you don't want to stomp on this thing. I actually keep it on the table and I just use my hand to push the buttons. But on the back, you've got a power button. Push that and you get a red light turning on to show you that the power is on and that it is connected. And if I hit the blackout button, turns on. If I go to color, we get red. Welcome to hell. There's the yellow. Uh, music mode and then your auto show right there. So if you want to use the foot switch, you can use that. It's probably a little bit easier to use the remote if you want to find a specific color because then you don't have to like click, 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 click to get through it. Uh, but the remote gives you blackout auto sound right at the top three. And fade does not work on the gig bar. So don't try that. And then um, we'll turn it back on and then we'll just switch over to let you see some of the colors here. So there's red, gives you green, blue, orange, UV, uh, you can switch over to black light and that will turn everything UV, looks pretty great, and then white. So with white, you know, you might think, oh, this is a good uh, look for first dance. I would say, no, don't use this for first dance. Um, if there's a way to turn the derbies off or point them up, then use it, but you're basically only getting, you know, just the two wash whites and you're not gonna get a lot of light on the dance floor. Check with the photographer and ask what they want, which is what I usually do. I say, hey, do you guys want me to put lights on the floor? And to be honest, most of the time they go, no, please don't do that. And I get it, they have a way they wanna light it. And with our lights, especially if you just have wash, it really only washes one side of the dance floor. And so by letting them run the lighting, then they can get the pictures that they want. I'm gonna throw it into sound mode so you can see what that looks like when I throw in sound mode and I'm just gonna play some music in here. It won't be copyrighted. I learned my lesson the hard fucking way. Next up, I'm gonna put it back in the case, let you see what it looks like all cased up and how to set it up. And honestly, it takes like two seconds. All in all, not too heavy, 24 pounds for the whole deal. All right, let's get it out and set up now. There we go, all set up and ready to rock. Right, so what are my thoughts on the gig bar move? Is it fun? Yeah. Is it great for weddings? I don't know, I think it's up to you what you decide you kinda wanna do. I don't think there's a right and wrong answer to it. If you want a wash look and just kinda have the colors fill the room, then then get a Dots Par or some sort of Chave wash and that will do the job. But if you want something with some more fun and options, then the kick bar move is honestly perfect for it. Look, I know that the, the dots from the derby annoy people, but here are my thoughts. It's actually supposed to work with a hazer. You're supposed to turn that on, give you all that mist, and then the dots turn more into lines, which look cooler. But the problem is a lot of venues that we work with don't want us messing around with those, which I don't blame them. I'm not a scientist. I shouldn't be dealing a lot with dry ice or however the hell those things work. I don't have a hazer. So yeah, you're gonna have some dots on people. As long as it's not during first dances, who the hell cares? That's just my opinion. I think one thing you should look into is DMX control. Once I connected these to sound switch, I was able to get a lot more control out of them and I thought that they were better. The one thing I did notice was it wasn't as rapid fire crazy like when you go sound mode it's just like all over the place with dmx it kind of looks a little bit better it pulses with the music it's a little bit more if you have up lights keep those things on because sometimes they can get pretty dark that would be another thing i would say they're not really that super bright unless you have a really dark venue 
and you're just focused on the dance floor, they'll be perfect. But if you're thinking these things are gonna light up the whole room, they're not. Hey, leave in the comment section if you have a gig bar move or if you have any questions about it. I'd love to answer any questions you have. Thanks for the comments I've gotten so far. You guys have saved me a couple times. If you like this and you like me, then you know what to do and just do that shit.